My name is Paul Koretz. I represent the 5th Council District, which is some of the west side and the valley. And I'm out here because I'm a longtime uh, supporter of labor, and I don't like what I see going on in Wisconsin and elsewhere, and we've got to put up a fuss about it, it turn now, it around. It seems like it's, it's been sweeping the country. There have been uh, anti-worker laws being passed in a dozen states, and uh, luckily it hasn't, hasn't come here to California, hasn't come to Los Angeles, which is we're, we're, we're glad about. Is there any danger of that, of that fire spreading? I would say not to California. To the extent that there is, we're to make sure it doesn't happen. I mean, this is this is not an anti-labor city. This is not an anti-labor state, and we're struggling. But we're not going to take collective bargaining rights away from workers. Absolutely not. Now, I've I've heard that in fact the city has has uh, come up with some pretty innovative solutions for construction jobs at the at the harbor and and as well with the uh, expo line. That that those will be union jobs. And and. Even more exciting, if we can make it happen, is the mayor's effort to uh, have have our subway system, which has a 30-year period of funding, actually get some advanced federal funding and be done in 10 years, which is called the 3010 plan. And if it's done, it'll be an example for the rest of the country, where you have a cash flow over a certain period of years. Instead of just asking the federal government for free money, they know they get the money back and they get to create tens of thousands of jobs at the same time. So we're doing a lot of things that are win-win situations. Uh, no harm, no no fiscal cost, but a lot of good jobs. So is it is it the um, the Measure R local tax funds that will help to, to pay for that over time to reimburse the federal government? Yes, that's exactly what it would be. We, we could build the subway in 10 years if we, if we could just get that advanced funding and then they'd be paid back over 30. But the government wouldn't be, the federal government wouldn't be in any danger of not getting their money. There's a, a very solid, clear cash flow and, and uh, resource, and that's a perfect way to go. As we've seen with the Expo line, are there any provisions for those transit jobs to be union jobs? Uh, those will be union jobs. They'll be good union jobs, and there's an incredibly high unemployment rate in construction. Now's the time. This is the time to put people back to work and get our infrastructure built. How many jobs is, are you, is it expected this project will, will entail? You know, I don't remember the number off the top of my head. If I had to guess, I'd guess uh, between 150,000 and 200,000 jobs, yeah. construction jobs. That's certainly welcome in these times. Uh, that would be very appropriate right now. And any any last comments for for the viewers who who may not might not understand what a union is and why why it matters. Well, before the union movement, the, it was very difficult to create middle class jobs. Uh, the union movement fought for decent wages and decent working hours. <coughs> I mean, a lot of it came out of the Triangle Shirtwaist Fire a hundred years ago where workers were locked in and ultimately there was a fire and, and uh, around 150 people perished. Um, and then we realized we have to protect worker safety, we have to protect working conditions. They were working incredibly long hours and they were locked in so they couldn't take a break. Um, over time, now there are decent middle class jobs that have been created, decent wages, decent working conditions, and we wouldn't have them if we didn't have unions. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Councilman Court. Thanks a lot. My pleasure.